Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. After the megafaunal extinctions that took place in Eurasia and North America at the end of the Pleistocene, only a few species of large mammals persisted into the Holocene. These survivors included bison, musk ox, and the most impressive of all modern deer, the moose. Belonging to the genus Alces, and renowned for their impressive palmate antlers and great size, with adult males reaching almost 7 feet tall at the shoulder, and weighing up to 820 kilograms, or 1,800 pounds. This browsing goliath first emerged during the late Pleistocene, probably in East Asia. From there it spread across Eurasia, although it only entered North America roughly 15,000 years ago by crossing the Bering Land Bridge. A cold, tolerant, and adaptable animal, the moose once possessed a very wide range during the earlier Holocene, being found all across the temperate and sub-Arctic forested regions of Eurasia and North America from France and the UK in the west, all the way to the eastern seaboard of the United States. Unlike most other species of deer, the moose is a largely solitary animal, utilising its fleshy upper lip to browse on a variety of terrestrial and aquatic vegetation. In modern times, this genus is preyed upon by wolves, brown bears and humans, although fully grown adults are quite formidable being able to move surprisingly quickly for such big animals, and possessing a devastating kick. However, despite their impressive dimensions, the genus Alces was not the largest deer to ever live, with that honour going to its extinct relative and probable ancestor Servalces, the so-called stag moose of the Pliocene and Pleistocene. Although certainly not the most famous big extinct Pleistocene deer, with that title going to the huge fallow deer relative Megaloceros, due to that genus's very impressive antlers. Servalces was significantly more massive, and in my opinion, is a criminally underrated member of Pleistocene megafaunal communities. Like the modern moose, Servalces was a member of the deer family Capriolinae, the so-called New World Deer, even though several members of this group, including reindeer, roe deer, and alces, are native to Eurasia as well, with capriolines originating in Central Asia during the Middle Miocene, between 11.5 and 7.7 .7 million years ago. Within its broader subfamily, the moose lineage is contained within the clade Alcini, which probably diverged during the early Pliocene over 5 million years ago. Members of Alcini appear to have originated in Eurasia, with the oldest known representative being the genus Libralces, which inhabited a wide range, stretching from France to Tajikistan. This animal produced at least three species, all of which were already large, indicating that members of the moose lineage have always been big and imposing. In other ways, however, Libralces was quite different from the modern moose, possessing a significantly more generalised narrow muzzle, more like that of a wapiti, as well as a slender, long-legged build, when adapted for running in more open woodland environments, and very impressive antlers with a span of over 2 metres, comparable in size to those of Megaloceros. During the later Pleistocene, it lived alongside the two other aforementioned moose genera in Eurasia, with each inhabiting slightly different ecological niches. Of the three, Libralces was the first to die out, vanishing roughly 780,000 years ago. The genus Servalces first appeared in the late Pliocene, also in Eurasia, but diversified during the Pleistocene, producing potentially up to four species. The oldest and most poorly understood of these was Servalces carnutorum, from the early Pleistocene of Europe. Well-preserved remains recovered from karstic deposits in Poland show that this species could live in a variety of environments, and could tolerate climatic shifts between warmer and cooler intervals, with the animal possessing a broader diet than the living moose, being capable of both browsing and grazing. Meanwhile, the better known Servalces latifrons also emerged during the early Pleistocene. This was a truly enormous deer, being either one of, if not the largest species of cervid to ever live. Size estimates place adult bulls at up to 7 feet 10 inches tall at the shoulder, and tipping the scales at about 1,000 kilograms or 2,200 pounds on average, with especially massive individuals reaching over 8 feet tall and weighing up to 2,600 pounds. To give you a sense of the sheer size of this species, this is about twice the weight of the far more famous Megaloceros giganteus. Its antlers also had longer beams than the living moose, although it were equipped with smaller branching palmate lobes at the tips. Given their overall shape, the antlers were probably not used in intraspecies combat, 
being utilised as display structures instead. Also, when compared to the living moose, the nasal openings were not as retracted, more similar to those of other caprioline deer. This may mean that C. latifrons lack the distinctive prehensile upper lip of the genus Alces, having a more quote-unquote typical generalised snout. Fossil remains of this species have been found across Eurasia, although the animal appears to have favoured more northerly habitats, just like its living cousin, with latifrons remains currently absent from the Iberian Peninsula and Greece, with its southernmost range extending into northern Italy. It probably inhabited relatively open coniferous woodlands, steppe, tundra and swampland, avoiding closed deciduous forests due to the width of its antlers. Like its living relative, C. latifrons was almost certainly a solitary animal with a mostly browsing diet, feeding on willows, aspens, larches, oaks and pine, in addition to herbaceous wetland vegetation. Its long limbs enabled C. latifrons to move quickly through boggy terrain. Despite its massive size, the stag moose would have been potentially targeted by the huge lion-like Panthera fossilis, cave hyenas and homotherium, with the largest deer to ever live dying out at the beginning of the late Pleistocene about 129,000 years ago, probably as a result of climatic cooling at the onset of the last glacial period. However, it has also been argued that this species was the ancestor of the genus Alces, with the familiar modern moose simply occupying its vacant niche. While C. latifrons became extinct in Eurasia, another species of Cervalces, C. scotti, persisted for much longer in North America. The ancestors of this animal arrived from Eurasia during the Middle Pleistocene and inhabited the swampy, spruce-dominated parkland ecosystems south of the Laurentide Ice Sheet. Although smaller than C. latifrons, the American C. scotti was comparable in size to the modern moose, although like its Eurasian relative, it possessed wider antlers and a narrow, generalised muzzle. Its range seems to have been fairly narrow when compared to some of the other species of Pleistocene American megafauna, with fossil remains being concentrated in a region stretching from Iowa to New Jersey. Here it lived in relatively open, swampy tundra forests, alongside the giant beaver Castoroides, muskox and caribou, while avoiding big cats and the giant short-faced bear Arctodus. This narrow habitat preference probably made this animal vulnerable to a changing climate at the end of the Pleistocene, with human hunting and the arrival of the modern moose roughly 15,000 years ago possibly being the final nail in the coffin. This left Alces as the only member of Alcini to persist into the Holocene, being the absolute units we all know, love, and let's be honest, fear. Thanks for watching everyone. Thanks in particular to all my patrons for suggesting this concept for a video. Going forward now, I'm going to upload my videos once per week instead of every two weeks, so you'll have access to even more Dr. Polaris content every Sunday. The next episode we're covering, as well as criticising, the recent quote-unquote dire wolf cloning efforts by bioengineering company Colossal, before detailing the real genus Anocyon Dyrus. See you again soon. Cheerio.